Hello everyone, uh, I'm coming to you tonight live from Wisconsin um, due to the miracles of, uh, of modern technology, but uh, well, actually of course that's not true at all. Uh, I, as you can see by the backdrop, I've pre-recorded this sermon for you this evening, um, and as I'm recording it now, uh, it's about a quarter after, 20 after four here on, on Tuesday, and we're under a tornado watch, and you, you may be able to hear the rain outside. Uh, so if the room starts spinning around, think nothing of it. That's just, uh, that's not you. It's just the weather. So at any rate, uh, tonight we're again in the book of James, and we're going to be looking at James chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Taming the tongue. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small flame or fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of inequity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the, Fa the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour, pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. I can't help but remember a little bit about what we talked about the other day um, in, in the Sunday services. We were talking about the Gospel of Mark. We're in the seventh chapter, uh, verses 1 through 23, as you remember. And there Jesus warned us about wickedness, deceit, envy, and slander. And all these things uh, tie back to this message that, the, that James the Just here, perhaps James the Just, the brother of Christ, is sharing with us here about taming the tongue. Before we get to that, I do want to uh, bring up the very first line here, verse 1, about not many of us wanting, or not many of us should be becoming teachers. Um, for the, those of us that teach will be judged with greater strictness. It's one of those verses that, that should cause any pastor or Sunday school teacher, for that matter, uh, to stop with great pause and consider uh, what it is that James is saying, that we have a great responsibility to the body, more so perhaps uh, than many of the others. But all of us bear that same responsibility to be worried about those things that Jesus worried us about, the wickedness, the deceit, the envy, and the slander most of which are propagated not only by our actions, but much, much more so by our tongues and by the words that we speak. James here uses a couple of different metaphors to try to illustrate for us uh, what he's getting at about the tongue being such a, a volatile and dangerous thing. And first he talks about us putting bits into the mouths of horses and that horses can by that be controlled. And of course, one of the interesting points there is that it's the sensitivity of the horse's mouth and their tongue that allows us to control them so that that small thing can be, is, is allowing um, the whole body to be controlled by the rider as well. So there's a twist on that metaphor. And James also then brings up the idea about a ship's rudder, that the ship, though a small thing, can steer the ship wherever it wants to go. And that the, that the ship has no choice in the matter. And sometimes it's kind of that way with our mouths. Sometimes the words we speak end up forcing us 
to go in a certain direction, perhaps not even a direction we wanted to go, because when, with inadvertent words uh, spoken in, in a moment of, of haste or a moment of anger or a moment of, 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 of high emotional tension, our ego won't let us abandon that, that plot or that course, rather, that that tone in that moment of, of anger or, or, or what have you, of, of high emotion, our, our bodies, are, or rather our egos, will take the whole body down that, that path, uh, many times towards destruction, if not almost certainly uh, towards harm of some form uh, because of our, of our, our, our irresponsible response to someone. But then James goes on and talks about it and compares, rather, the tongue to a fire. Uh, we might think of that more as the words that that tongue is thrown forth out into uh, the world, that those words become sparks that can ignite those around us, especially those words that are spoken in times of high stress and high emotional situations, where those around us are, are on edge as well, and they're like tinder in a fire, and that blaze will go out ahead of us, and, and there is so much destruction. Uh, and once that, once that fire has spread, it takes time, if ever, to, uh, to if we're going to look at it as a forest fire, it takes many years to regrow that forest, and in the end, those trees are never the same, and they're not the same trees sometimes, or often, uh, if not always. So we have to be careful because the tongue is a terrible thing of far as destruction. But then he goes on and talks there about um, with it we curse, or excuse me, with it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. And he's talking about that we shouldn't do both the blessing and the cursing with the same tongue. Um, there's both both a warning there as well as there's there should be some some attribute or some component of hope there as well for if we use our tongue to bless the father if we use our tongue to bless the body as all you that are gathered out there in those pews now you can't see yourselves uh of course because uh the mystery of time and space uh you'll be there soon enough and uh, so i say hi to you all um but those words that are spoken with that tongue can bless that body they can be food that nurtures that body as well. So the tongue is a powerful thing, and it is a powerful thing that can be used for both good and for evil. And we need to remember those words that Jesus shared with us back in Mark, where we do not speak words out of wickedness, trying to be divisive and deceitful. We don't speak words because we are envious and we want to to diminish or even to take what our brother or sister has that we wish that they, they didn't have because we have our hearts are filled with spite and envy. And we don't use our tongues to slander our brother or our sister either because of our envy or our ego and our wickedness. Um, but rather we use that, that tongue, we use those words, those words that have so much power, we use those words to bless and to build up. God bless you this evening. I'm sorry that I'm not there with you. I, I look forward to being with you again on the 20th. Uh, as, I'm, as I'm speaking these words, I'm working on multiple sermons, and I'm working on that sermon as well uh, as, as I get ready to go on the trip so that Brittany can have uh, all of the, the PowerPoint laid out ahead of you. I pray that this, that, that this message finds you all in good health and doing well. And again, I look forward to being with you very, very soon. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray for you, but we, I pray for that blessing upon you. Amen.